Hello, I'm Nikola Tesla. At the end of 1889, after having spent a year working in the workshops of George Westinghouse, in Pittsburgh, I experienced such an enormous longing to resume my interrupted investigations that, despite the tempting proposition that did, I left for New York with the intention of resuming my laboratory work. But, due to the pressing demands of various scientific societies' foreigners, I made a trip to Europe where I gave lectures before the Institution of Electrical Engineers and the Royal Institution, in London, and the Société de Physique, in Paris. Later, and after a brief visit to my home in Yugoslavia, I returned to this country in 1892, eager to dedicate myself to the subject that is the predilection of my thoughts, the study of the universe. For the next two years, with intense concentration, I was sufficiently lucky enough to make two powerful discoveries. The first was a dynamic theory of gravity which I have elaborated in all its details and which I hope make it known to the world very soon. Such a theory explains the causes of this force and the movements of the heavenly bodies under its influence so satisfactorily that put an end to vain speculations and false conceptions, such as that of space curved. According to relativists, space has a tendency to curvature, due to a property or inherent characteristic of the stars. Even when I know grant a veneer of truth to this fantastic idea, it contradicts itself. All action is accompanied by an equivalent reaction and the effects of the latter are directly opposite to those of the first. Assuming that the bodies act on the space that surrounds them causing their curvature, to my naive mind it seems that curved spaces must react on bodies and produce the effects opposites, that is, straighten the curves. As action and reaction coexist, concludes that the supposed curvature of space is totally impossible. But even if existed, it would not explain the motions of bodies as they are observed. Only the existence of a force field can account for them, and accepting this implies that it is not necessary to resort to the curvature of space. All the literature on this matter is vain and destined to fall into oblivion. So are all attempts to explain the workings of the universe without acknowledging the existence of the ether and the essential role it plays in phenomena.